to um, to read by yourself and I provided bite sized information. I hope you go through all this information on the telegram this year. I also posted it on elip. Right, uh, I hope that you understand what the topic is all about. Uh, the last week's topic, uh, the week before, it's not last week, last week we have the talk, right? Uh, so LU2 is about solid waste management. Yeah? Um, and here we focus on uh, non-organic waste yeah? because solid waste is divided into two types, non-organic and organic. Yeah, so organic waste, uh, we will discuss that in LU4, uh, which is composting, right? So in LU2, um, if you go through the lecture notes, uh, it focuses on recycling, right? Uh, because recycling is one of the ways, it's not the only way of managing the solid waste, it's one of the ways of managing the solid waste, okay? Um, so, and I'm sure that you know what recycling is, uh, but uh, that is considered as um, if we talk about normal recycling, actually it is not uh, a biotechnology way of managing the waste. So from biotech perspective, you have you have to relate. I mean, you have to um, yeah, you have to relate how uh, what you can do more with just recycling. So I provided some information. Right, for example, uh, there is a there is a uh, information about where is it? Are you was it this one? Oh, not this one. Uh, it's about the um, I think the the information that I posted on on Telegram, which is the conversion of used clothes right into uh, bioethanol, whereby the bioethanol can be used as a fuel for um, project for aeroplane. So that is an example of uh, biotech um, methods to treat, to tackle the solid waste. So uh, it, uh, it, it actually, the biotech is like it um, elevates the recycling to the next level. Okay? The, the, uh, the clothes, the used clothes, they are recycled. Yeah? If, you, if you take note on the definition of recycling, it's about processing the waste uh, materials or recyclables, right? And in order to uh, produce new products, right? So in the case of um, the used clothes, uh, the used clothes, they are recycling, but uh, we treat it in uh, using the biotechnological ways that is to um, make full use of microbes, yeah? whereby the, the clothes which are made from cotton, okay, cotton is a polymer, and cotton is made from cellulose, yeah? cellulose is a polymer, uh, so cellulose is made from polymer. You know what polymer, right? Polymer is, is a combination of many monomers. And the monomers that make cellulose, yeah, which is the component of cotton, yeah, uh, is glucose, right? So glucose is a, glu uh, is a sugar. So we know that glucose, uh, which is a sugar, can be used for growing microorganisms. Yeah? So that's how the science behind it. Yeah? And... Uh, the once the cotton, the polymer is, uh, it has to be uh, broken first in order to get the glucose, right? Otherwise, if you give the microbes to the cellulose, uh, there will be no reaction still because um, the cellulose is not in a in a form that is that can be eaten by the microbes, so it has to undergo hydrolysis. Uh, where is that? Uh, I put it on the on Telegram, but I don't put it on the wait, maybe this maybe here is it? Then here running this. Yeah, I just want to show the um, the diagram. But anyway, um so that hydrolysis will uh, convert the polymer, the cellulose into glucose, and the glucose when it is um you know, it has been broken down. Uh, there are many glucose monomers. So the glucose can be used as a carbon source for growing. Uh, it's actually, it's not just for bioethanol because if you see the glucose, it can be eaten by uh, quite a lot of microbes. Huh? So, and we know that different microbes can actually, uh, can actually 
produce a lot of products. So if we feed Saccharomyces cerevisiae, which is known as a bioethanol producer, right? When, when we feed Saccharomyces cerevisiae with uh, glucose, of course it will produce bioethanol. But if you feed something else, like maybe genetically engineered microorganisms that can produce certain products, certain enzymes, uh, it, it is possible to use the glucose derived from cotton, yeah, from used clothes to produce various products. Yeah, it's not just bioethanol actually, but the, but the uh, the case presented there uh, is an example of how glucose from the cotton from the used clothes can be uh, used, can be can be uh, can serve as a feedstock for. Uh, producing value-added products. So in that case, mm -hmm. uh, the bioethanol uh, is a value-added product because it is given a value, right? Uh, so, so that is an example. And so that's that is one of the ways. It's not the only way, but you, from there you can think about the possibility of uh, the possibility of uh, other processes uh, which are based on biotechnology principles or foundation. Okay, so I hope that it gives you useful insights into what are the roles of uh, biotechnology in treating solid waste. Yeah, solid waste. Okay, uh, that is what the topic is all about. Okay, recycling, solid waste management. Uh, I provided some videos, useful videos on ELE. Uh, I hope that you guys uh, watch each of them, right? Uh, it's quite useful. Um, it's quite actually interesting to know a lot of information about um, how waste is conducted, especially in uh, outside Malaysia. Because if you are in Malaysia, maybe we are not really aware about some technologies or uh, novel approaches. For example, in Japan, this is one of the videos. Um, like us, we have. Uh, we normally like if we recycle, we normally recycle the three main types of recyclables, right? Paper, um, aluminum cans, uh, plastic bottles. So those are the most common. Mm -hmm. And even that is is very challenging, actually, because we don't have uh, a lot of facilities for recycling. Yeah? Um, but if you see in Japan, if you click on the fourth video over here, Japan, Japan's town with no waste, they recycle about, I think, uh, 34 or 37, 34 types of recyclables. So actually, the recyclables, they are not just plastic bottles, they are not just the uh, papers, they are not just the clothes, they are not just the uh, aluminum chains, but there are actually a lot of, a lot of uh, solid waste that we discarded every day. They can be actually recycled. For example, the battery, um, what else? Uh, yeah, there are a lot, uh, many things I can't, I can't think at the moment. But yeah, so so Japan has uh, demonstrated that those waste shouldn't go to the landfill. Huh? Landfill, you know, landfill. Landfill is a place where uh, the trash are down. Yeah. So we know that. Uh, yeah, of course we don't have choice. Sometimes um, in certain countries that do not have um, high technology, we just dump our trash to the landfill. Trash. I mean, we dump our trash into the dustbin, and those trash will actually be sent to the landfill. It means that it will not be recycled. But in Japan, they reduce the amount of waste to be sent to the landfill, and even actually they don't produce. They claim that they don't produce waste because the organic waste they uh, convert it into compost or into fertilizer, whereas those non-organic, yeah, uh, that can be recycled, they recycle it. So actually. Yeah, it is actually possible to to lead a zero waste lifestyle. Yeah. So that's what happened in Japan. Yeah? So I hope that you watch all of the videos here. Uh, it's not that really long. Uh, just I think maximum maybe ten minutes. Yeah? Yeah. So it gives uh, lots of ideas and information about how solid waste are managed around the world. Okay. Right, so that's uh, LU2 is all about uh, solid waste management. Right, so today's topic will be on uh, LU3, which is um, liquid waste treatment. Okay, the waste can be divided into solid and liquid 
right? And the solid can be divided into organic and non-organic. So LU2 just concerned about the non-organic or the recyclables uh, waste. Uh, and the organic waste will be discussed in LU4. So the liquid waste will be discussed in uh, today's lecture on LU3. Yeah. And you have might have some information about liquid waste treatment uh, also during uh, last week's talk by uh, Puan Siti Rabia from Sarawak Civil Rich Department. Yeah. So she also informed or introduce you guys uh, some basics about uh, liquid waste treatment. Right, okay. Now let's have a look at um, the lecture notes. Uh, so far, any question on the like, uh, solid Solid waste management. I suppose the topic is not that really hard. Um, so that's why I asked you guys to read by yourself. And if there is anything you want to discuss in terms of the biotechnological uh, approaches, please let me know. Okay, so this is the lecture notes for today. Right. So the outline for today's lecture, uh, we're going to have a look at some introduction, right? And then process overview. Um, so in general, the liquid waste treatment can be divided into uh, three main processes, named as primary, secondary, and tertiary processes, right? But, if, but also there is a preliminary step uh, pretreatment but that is not considered as the main processes, but uh, yeah, there is a pretreatment step before the primary treatment, yeah? But the three main processes are primary, secondary, and tertiary. So those are the things that we are looking at. And finally is the sludge treatment and disposal. Okay, so in this uh, LU, you need to take note on several terminologies uh, because uh, a lot of the information, uh, it will use those terminologies. So you need to know what uh, the terms are, okay, uh, before you go into the points. Okay. Right, so liquid waste treatment is defined as the process of removing contaminants from wastewater uh, and household sewage. Okay, sewage is one of the terms that we need to know. Sewage is actually wastewater, yeah. Sewage is wastewater, right? Um, to remove physical, chemical, and biological contaminants. Okay, so uh, please don't get confused with water treatment alone. Uh, this is waste. This is something that you discarded, right? Something that you, uh, yeah, you thrown. I mean, you use the water, and it will be channeled to the, uh, to the underground, and finally to the uh, sewage treatment plant. So the water treatment, if we talk about water treatment, clean water, uh, that one is different. That is a different process. So this is waste, okay? Uh, so don't, don't think or don't associate this with uh, the clean water treatment. And of course the water treatment, like the one, uh, the water that comes uh, from your pipe and the clean water, that one comes from mountain, from uh, clean sources, yeah? Uh, and that one also have it, its own uh, processes to treat how to make sure that the water provided to the household, to the business areas, to the uh, commercial areas are clean. But we are not going to talk about it. Now we are going to talk about waste, yeah? liquid waste treatment. Okay, so the purpose, uh, the objective of the liquid waste treatment, yeah, we know that the liquid waste, they are used water, but what is the purpose of the treatment? The, uh, the purpose is to make sure that uh, the effluent or the, the the liquid waste that is channeled finally to the river and to the sea is free from contaminants that can create water pollution. Okay, so we do not want our river and our sea to be polluted by the contaminants or by the yeah by the contaminants uh, present in the wastewater that we discard from our household from 
the commercial areas from the agricultural areas. So that is the purpose. Means that uh, so the wastewater that comes from your house, from the schools, from the universities, they are actually uh, channel underground, right? And finally, before they reach the uh, river, right? Uh, they actually reach um, sewage treatment plant, sewage treatment plant, which is managed by sewerage department. Okay, so remember the officer last week, uh, she is from sewerage department. Sewerage in Malay is pendentungan, right? So that department is responsible for treating the sewage. Okay, so don't call them sewage department. No, it's not sewage department. So it's sewerage department. So that's why in this topic, you have to take note on certain, um, certain important terminologies. Okay, so there is sewerage. Sewerage is pembentungan. Uh, sewer, sewer is the one that uh, contain the wastewater comes out from your house. Yeah, it's like uh, the uh, sewer, like it's uh, the, the tube underground, under the ground. I don't know how to describe it. Perhaps you understand it. Sewer, okay. And then there is also sewage. Sewage is the wastewater, actually. And later there is also uh, what we call sludge. Okay, uh, I'll explain about it. But at this point, this differentiate sewerage, sewer, and sewage. Okay. Right. Um, so that is the objective. We want to make sure that uh, the wastewater, even though it is still considered as waste, but it is it is free from uh, all the contaminants, and those contaminants are to be removed during the uh, sewage treatment plant. Yeah. Uh, sorry, during the sewage treatment process at the plant. Okay. Right, so that is basically what's the objective of the liquid waste treatment. Okay, so how those contaminants are removed? So they are removed by uh, uh, by all of the three processes, physical, biological, chemical. So during the sewage treatment process uh, at the plant, okay, uh, they are physical processes, they are biological processes, they are chemical processes. Okay, so when we talk about physical processes, it's something to do with um, the, the, the outer, outer part of the, uh, the thing, or maybe the, in this case, is the liquid waste. So it means that you just uh, filter it and something to do with uh, physical uh, characteristics. Okay, so when we say biological processes, so this is obviously we use microorganisms, we use biological system. Uh, which is in this in this case is a uh, microorganism. And when we say chemical processes means that we add chemicals. So all of the all of these type of processes are uh, involved in in the treatment of the sewage. OK. So uh, there are two types of sewer system, sewer system, uh, the one that collects the wastewater from our house from the house from the commercial areas, from agricultural areas, industrial areas. Yeah? So there are two types: uh, open collection system and closed collection system. Right. So perhaps the one that uh, in main cities in Malaysia are closed collection system. So that's why you can you you do not see uh, you don't really see actually how the wastewater is. Uh, channel yeah? because it is under the ground. Yeah? So, and also it is close. So the name, as the name implies, it is actually close. Uh, but open collection system, there is another way uh, and it is, it is an open system, right? And uh, what happened in this type of collection system, uh, the clean rainwater is mixed with dirty wastewater. Um, so, and, and then it, it is treated. So it, it is a mixed system. Uh, in other words, and this system is uh, practiced in most of the underdeveloped and developing countries. Yeah? So perhaps not in Malaysia, maybe. Yeah, but in Malaysia, we can see most of the system are closed collection system. Okay? Right, so in this topic, uh, we're going to focus on closed collection system only. Yeah? So we're not going to discuss about uh, open collection system. Okay, so this is of uh, this is closed collection system. 
right? So this is, you can see from, from the house, from the toilets, yeah, there is an underground channel. This is actually sewer. This is the sewer. Right? This is sewer. So the one that contains or channel the wastewater. So it is under the ground. Under the ground, uh, it, it is an underground system. Uh, and that's how it is closed. Yeah? So it's a closed collection system. Okay. So this one you can see this is a sewer for uh, collecting the rainwater, uh, sorry, from the, the wastewater from the household. And there is also a sewer that collects the uh, wastewater from um, the urban areas. Uh, we call it storm water from the drains from uh, Farid Longkang. So that is called storm, storm water. So this one is a sewer for storm water. Okay. Right. Uh, so let's look into the overview of the liquid waste treatment at the uh, sewage treatment plant. Okay, you, you can see here the picture at the bottom. That is an example of a uh, sewage treatment plant. Okay? Sewage treatment plant. So normally in this course, uh, before the pandemic, uh, we we have a field trip visit to Sarawak Sewage Department. Uh, whereby you are brought to all of the unit operations like at the sewage treatment plant. Yeah? You are introduced to the primary treatment, uh, the, the unit operations for the primary treatment, the secondary treatment, the tertiary treatment. But since uh, this time around, it's fully online, so you can have the field trip. Uh, yeah, so basically this is actually uh, the overview of the sewage treatment plant. So, when we say primary treatment, it is the name of the treatment. Uh, so under the primary treatment, there are actually uh, different types of uh, unit operation or uh, facilities or what you call this uh, equipments that conduct the treatment. Okay. So primary treatment, primary treatment. Uh, the purpose of the primary treatment is to um, to separate the solid from the liquid. Uh, we know that it is liquid wastewater, but actually in that liquid wastewater, there are certain amount of solid, certain amount of solid that is suspended. Okay, so that is basically uh, what will be uh, done. That is uh, the separation of the solid from the liquid. Yeah, so that is the purpose of the primary treatment. Um, and then the secondary treatment. So, so whatever the effluent from the primary treatment will be channeled to the secondary treatment, whereby in the secondary treatment, uh, microorganisms uh, come into play. So microorganisms are utilized in order to remove uh, the organic matters in the liquid wastewater. So I'll go into detail, but just to introduce what's the purpose of each of the treatment here. So that is secondary treatment. And then uh, whatever the uh, effluent, uh, the wastewater that is treated from the secondary treatment is then passed to the tertiary treatment. So the tertiary treatment, the purpose is to uh, polish the wastewater. Yeah? In short, it is to polish the wastewater before it is to be, uh, it is to be delivered to the rivers, yeah? to the sea. Okay. So the treatment for under the tertiary treatment is the chemical treatment. Chemical treatment, uh, whereby the treated water, uh, the water is treated with chlorine. So the chlorine will kill the microorganisms yeah, that are present, uh, that are brought from the secondary treatment. So they, uh, the, the microbes are killed with the chlorine, and then the treated water will be then channeled to the uh, to the river or to the sea. Okay, now, uh, if you notice um, what the officer from uh, Sarawak Civil Department uh, told you last week, right? Um, in some countries, the wastewater, uh, they convert it into clean water where it can be actually used. But in Malaysia, it doesn't happen yet, right? Because of many factors, uh, perhaps, the technology might not be there yet for us. Um, maybe we are approaching that, but perhaps there are many issues that when we talk about converting the wastewater into uh, usable water, uh, 
but I can say that there is no need yet for us to go to that extent. We still have a lot of clean water sources. Yeah, that's one of the reasons. Another reason is um, the technology, right? Maybe we we are not focusing on that yet because of no need. There is no, there is, yeah, there is no need. And another issue is uh, related to uh, the religion. Like in Islam, we cannot, um, it is it's, it's quite doubtful to use um, clean water that is actually derived from wastewater. Yeah, so uh, there are those issues that, you know, that revolve around uh, the conversion of the wastewater into clean water. Okay, that is what you have to know. And yeah, so the last statement here, right, you see the treated water with chlorine can be supplied to homes as drinking water. This this is what happened in some of the countries. Like uh, I know in United States, yeah, uh, and also uh, one city said in Singapore, right? I'm not really entirely sure about it, but yeah, there are some countries that convert the wastewater into clean water that can literally can be drank. But I'm not sure how convincing it will be to drink the, the water, but that is uh, the information that you need to know. Lah, okay, so those things or those processes uh, are carried out under the tertiary treatment. Okay, so the tertiary treatment, uh, like for our country, we are just like treating uh, whatever come from the secondary treatment and uh, treat it with chlorine or maybe some other types of treatment and then we release it to the river and the sea. But in some countries, they uh, they convert it as a uh, thing for, drink, for water, um, waters that can be used. Yeah, someone, someone raised hand. Is there any question? I saw someone raise hand. Any question, guys? Is it clear so far? Hello. Yeah. Any questions so far? Okay, thanks. Okay, so so those are the three main processes. Briefly, yeah, we're not yet into it uh, in detail, right? Uh, so I mentioned that before the primary treatment, uh, there is actually a preliminary step or pre-treatment step, okay, but it's not considered as the main. Uh, is the main, It's not considered as a main process. Okay, but let's have a look what the pre-treatment is. So the pre-treatment or the prelim preliminary step um, is a is a step that removes the solid materials. Okay, here the solid materials is something that is uh, big in size. Yeah? The primary treatment it separates those solids that are suspended. You know something like looks like slurry in the wastewater. So they are dissolved in the wastewater, but they are actually not entirely liquid. So those are the types of solids to be separated during the primary treatment. But for the pre-treatment, uh, the pre-treatment removes the solid materials, um, you know, something like something that is totally solid, like uh, maybe uh, um, like the, the diapers or whatever, the things that is blocked, you, you flow it uh, through your, uh, through your opening, through your toilet without you realize it. Uh, and there are so many things. Eh? Um, so the sanitary products. Eh? So those are the things that are to be removed during the pre-treatment. Yeah, we can also see some of the examples here, the bottles, the plastics, the leaves, uh, the branches, the, uh, the tree branches, and so on. So this is something uh, related with a big size of solids, okay? So pre-treatment removes all those solids from entering uh, the treatment plant yeah, because otherwise it will block the, the channels, the sewer. Okay, so that's what happened during the pre-treatment. Uh, and how the pre-treatment is conducted, there is a screen, yeah, a bar screen. Yeah, before it means that uh, once the wastewater, uh, before the wastewater enter the treatment plant, there is a screens that is installed, right, in order to screen all those uh, solid materials, okay? 
Right, so you can see from the picture here, there are the solid particles that are screened, yeah, uh, that are prevented from entering the plant. Right, and this is the types of the screen. Oh, screen okay. So uh, it is also called screen screening process, actually the screen treatment. Okay. So this is another example of uh, the grid. Yeah, sometimes they call it grid or screen. Right, so this is uh, this traps all the solid particles, right? And the velocity here it says that it is adjusted in order to allow the settlement of sand, grit, stones, and broken glass. So meaning to say that uh, the flow of the liquid uh, is under uh, the control, yeah? the, the, the under certain speed. Yeah, so it is controllable in order <laughs> to make sure that it is not too fast, and it's not too slow. Right, so that's what happened during the pre-treatment. Okay, so uh, during the primary treatment, so now the liquid wastewater, the one that has uh, passed all the screening, yeah. So if it is not entirely liquid yet, yeah, as I said just now, uh, the the type of solid to be separated during the primary treatment is the one that are dissolved uh, in the water in the wastewater. So you know slurry, right? What slurry means? Slurry is something like a liquid that is mixed with some solids, soft solids. Uh, so it becomes like a slurry suspension. So you imagine uh, clean water. If you see the clean water, then the suspension is very light, isn't it? Uh, but if you think about slurry suspension, it is a bit viscous because of there are some solid particles inside it. So I hope that you can understand how slurry suspension is. So that is uh, to be um, to be treated like, during the primary treatment. Okay. So the primary treatment under this, there are a different uh, okay, different uh, treatment plan. It has its own uh, format. So it has its own styles or um, uh, way of managing uh, the waste, even though they are actually primary treatment, they are actually secondary and also tertiary, but uh, they might use different equipments. Okay, so these equipments, uh, sometimes some of them are using what we call uh, settling tank, and some of them are using sedimentation, sedimentation tanks, but the purpose is the same. That is to, uh, to remove or to separate the liquid from the suspended solids. Right, so under primary treatment, uh, these are some of the examples of uh, equipment used at the sewage treatment plant. Uh, settling basins, uh, free settling basins, and then uh, sedimentation tanks, and there is also primary clarifier. Okay. So if you see the word settling uh, sediment, right, it's actually, it means the same. Uh, why it is called so is because it allows the liquid to settle inside uh, the tank or the basin or sediment. Uh, wait, yeah, a sediment. Okay. So you think about like a liquid that has some suspended solid when you let it, you know, sediment, when you let it settle for a certain period of time, you would see that uh, there would be the heavy portion at the bottom, isn't it? And this is the, the pure liquid. And this is the, uh, the the heavy suspended solid or the suspended solid. This is suspended. The suspended solid. And the one that is light, yeah, it will float on to on the top of the surface. Yeah. So something like maybe grease or oil. Okay. So it will be floated on the surface of the tank, right? So this is actually what happened during the primary treatment. It separates those, um, the liquid wastewater into that portion, okay? Um, okay, so what happened? So the pure liquid or the liquid portion over here, this is the one that is going to be continued with the secondary treatment. Secondary treatment, whereas uh, 
um, the grease and the oil will be scrapped from the surface of the tank, right? Uh, in some plants, they recycle it, they use it for saponification process, yeah? they cover it for the sap uh, saponification process, whereby the grease of the fat is converted into uh, soap or ethanol. Yeah, so that's the process it's all about. But in some of the plants, maybe in Malaysia, some of the plants in Malaysia, we don't recycle it, we just remove it or maybe send it to uh, to the landfill. Okay, so that's why I said different plants, it has its own way of managing the waste. So some of the advanced plants, they might uh, reduce uh, all of those uh, waste. I mean, they prevent it from sending it to the landfill because we know that the landfill is actually the last resort. We don't want actually, but sometimes we don't have choice. Uh, so as much as possible, uh, the best way is to recycle, to to use it again and convert it into something else. That is the ideal way. Okay. Right, so now when you see the pure liquid here, the liquid portion from the primary treatment will be channeled to the secondary treatment. But what happened to the suspended solid? So the grease oil just now, it can be recovered for saponification or it can be just discarded, okay? Uh, this suspended solid is what we call sludge, okay, sludge. So this is another term that you need to know or take note. Okay, after this, I'm going to refer uh, sludge in the last part. Okay, so it's a suspended solid from the primary treatment. Okay, so what happened to this sludge? This is actually organic matters. Yeah, organic matters. When we say organic matters, uh, they are produced from biological sources. Yeah, it can be from uh, organisms like plants, from animals, from even the uh, uh, humans poo, right? Is That one is also organic matter. Okay? Uh, so that is sludge. So what happened to this sludge? This one will be sent, uh, if you remember from Juan City's uh, talk, it says that they use it as uh, in a small amount for compost, right? For making compost or fertilizer. Budget. So, but in some cases, because of sometimes uh, the plant also, they, they have like certain, I mean, they have to carry out certain operations based on uh, the needs as well. Eh? But in some cases, this sludge, uh, it can be, it, it, would, it, it will be just sent to the landfill. It will be just disposed as a waste, uh, which is actually uh, not really favorable because we know that what happened to the landfill, the problem with the landfill, um, the space is limiting, right, from day to day. And also it can uh, create a lot of uh, bad effects to the environment, like the greenhouse gas effects. Yeah? So that's the landfill. But another way of how to use or manage the sludge here is for composting. So this is for you to know. And also in some plants, uh, they convert the sludge into uh, biogas. Okay, I'll talk about it later. So these are all the options for how to use, how to manage the sludge from uh, the liquid wastewater. Okay, so now let's talk about the liquid portion over here. What happened uh, to the liquid that is channeled to the secondary treatment? Okay. So if you see before that, if you see this picture, this is uh, this is what we call the sedimentation tank, the tank over here. Yeah, the tank, this tank, all of these tanks, these are sedimentation tank. And on top of it, there is uh, what is called scrapper, yeah, mechanical scrapper. So it, actually it is moving, that scrapper is moving. Uh, when it is in operation, it is moving. So what happened is that it removes all the grease oil on top of the surface of the tank. Okay, so that is the purpose of the scrapper. So this is how it looks like by this picture. So all of the heavy solids will settle at the bottom. All right. Okay. So that is primary treatment. So now we move to the secondary treatment. So 
this is just deals with the liquid portion, right? The liquid uh, portion from the primary treatment. Liquid portion from primary treatment. Okay, okay so uh, during the secondary treatment, there are uh, certain equipment, yeah? certain equipment uh, that are used to carry out the secondary treatment. Okay, and the types of the uh, equipment is different from one plant to another. Like uh, at SSD, the, at Sarawak Sewerage System as a uh, department, they use uh, aeration tanks. Okay? Aeration tank is one of the examples of the equipment that can carry out the secondary treatment. But let's have a look at uh, what the secondary treatment is all about. Okay, so the secondary treatment is designed to reduce the biological content uh, of the sewage, which are derived from human waste, food waste, sops, and detergent. Okay, so during this treatment, um, uh, this treatment makes for use of the microorganisms in the wastewater. Okay, we know that microbes are everywhere, right? And uh, what determines their availability is their survival. Meaning to say that if the if the microbes the microbes that exist in your stomach in your guts they can live in your stomach because uh, they are food in that stomach that you know that can make them survive, isn't it? So if they can uh, if if you see the microbes in in the soil they can they are there because uh, they are the the environment is conducive for them to be there. So meaning to say that. They are not there if they can't survive. So in the wastewater, they are microbes. Um, they are microbes, naturally existing microbes, and they are there because they can survive in the wastewater. So those microbes are to be uh, to to be used, yeah, to uh, to be utilized or to be manipulated during the secondary treatment. So we know that the idea, uh, we know that they are microbes. And we have to make full use of those microbes. So how um, how is that possible? Is by providing conducive environment for the microbes to grow, and not to just to grow, but also to uh, because they grow, they consume actually the organic matters in the uh, wastewater. Okay, so that is actually the purpose of the secondary treatment, and how to do that. Uh, basically, is to provide uh, oxygen, provide the oxygen to the microbes. So it means uh, all the equipments. If you see, yeah? if you see, this is some of the equipments. Uh, so the oxygen, the air, uh, is provided into the tanks. So this is this is activated sludge tanks. We call it this one. So this is an example of the equipment used for secondary treatment. So oxygen or air is provided into the tank so that uh, it is actually air. So we know that air has oxygen. So uh, the oxygen can be used by the microbes because the microbes are aerobic microorganisms. Obviously, I mean, yeah, they are in water. In yeah, They are aerobic microorganisms. So we know that oxygen is essential for their growth. So when they when they grow, right, uh, means they eat. I mean, they can't grow if, let's say, they don't eat things, right? They must eat something. So what they eat is the organic matters in the liquid wastewater. So that's how all those organic matters can be uh, removed from the uh, wastewater. Okay. So the types of the system used for the secondary treatment, uh, there are two types to make the two main types. The first one is attached growth system. Okay, we have a look at first uh, what the two main types are. And the second part, uh, the second system is a suspended growth system. Okay, so what is meant by attached growth system? This is something uh, like uh, there is a filter. So it means that um, you see here, this is actually the filter. This is an example of attached growth system. Right. The whole thing here is the filter, and it is said uh, it is called attached. Is because 
uh, actually the microbes are attached on that filter. So the microbes are not um, are not free uh, in the tank. Yeah, something like that. Okay. So it means there is a once the influence comes in into the system, right? So this is the influence. So the, the microbes will form a layer, a layer called biofilm, right? So and that biofilm is attached to the filter. Yeah, so that's why the system is called attached. Yeah, so it means that there is a structure that support uh, the microbes. Yeah? Uh, so it is not freely uh, like in the, the other system. Okay, so that is attached growth system. An example of the equipments, um, they use trickling filter. The whole system here is called trickling filter. The whole system here. Okay? This is an example of trickling. Filter. Okay, so you can see that uh, the the influent comes in here, right, and then it will be treated uh, by the microbes during the process, and it will go out, yeah, and it will be sent to the next uh, equipment, yeah, to the clarifier. So that is attached growth system. An example is trickling filter. Another system is a suspended growth system. The suspended growth system is uh, is a tank. It's basically a tank like this. This is like a tank. Eh? This is a tank, and this is called activated sludge tank. So it means that the in uh, the effluent, the wastewater, they are contained in the tank, right? And the oxygen, the air is provided to the tank. So that's why if you see it in the operation, there are actually uh, the the there are blues of you know, the, the bubbles, there are so many bubbles in the tank because of the aeration, the, the provision of air. Yeah. Uh, so this is what is called suspended growth system. Sus suspended means that the, 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 the system is in suspension. It's like they are free in the suspension. Okay. Um, so examples of the equipments are activated sludge tanks. Yeah. So which are used also in SSD, in the Sarawak Civil Rage Department. Okay, so these are examples of features. If let's say we take the samples from the wastewater and examine it under microscopes, um, actually you can see a lot of microorganisms. Um, so some of you, uh, there is a question from you, right? Uh, or from, yeah, from one of you uh, last, uh, last week, yeah, you asked about what kind of microorganisms. Uh, so that one, there is no absolute answer for that because in the wastewater, there are a lot of microorganisms. There are many types of bacteria. So if you are interested, you have you can you can sample the water and you can examine under the microscope. And perhaps from one plant to another, uh, the types of the microbes will be different. Yeah. So because of different sources. Yeah. So that one is what can be said is like. Uh, is a, there? There is a consortium. Consortium means there is a, a combination of many types of microorganisms yeah? uh, in the wastewater. Actually, yeah. So the source of the wastewater also determines the types of the uh, microorganism. Okay. So under this uh, suspended growth system, we know that the air is provided to the tank, but the way how the aeration. Uh, the aeration is uh, conducted, it can be either bottom aerated, meaning to say that uh, the blower or maybe the tube that contains the air is put at the bottom so that the air comes from the bottom to the surface, right, in the tank, I'm talking about in the tank. Uh, and also there is also surface aerated. Uh, surface aerated means that the aeration is from the top of the tank. So uh, each of these actually it has its own uh, pros and cons, yeah? and it depends like it depends on the plant whether they prefer uh, bottom aerated or they prefer surface aerated. But for the bottom aerated means that when it is from the bottom, you can imagine that it is actually much easier for the air to go into the whole tank compared to the surface. It needs it needs. Uh, 
maybe more pressure actually to, I don't know, I'm not really sure about it, but uh, this is my opinion. It would be like um, challenging actually to provide the air in order from the top to the surface, uh, sorry, from the top to the bottom. Yeah, but uh, perhaps there is a reason why uh, the system is invented. Okay. See, uh, so the statement here, under the surface aerated, uh, they do not provide as good mixing as it is normally achieved in bottom aerated activated sludge system. Right, uh, so it is stated actually that actually bottom aerated is much better. Okay, so that is the two types of aeration system. Okay, so any question? That is the secondary treatment. Yeah, secondary treatment. Okay, so um, under the secondary treatment also, there is a, a step, let's say after this activated, uh, after the activated sludge uh, tanks, the equipment that is installed after it, that receive the, the wastewater uh, is called clarifier. Clarifier is, as the name implies, is is actually it separates it further separate uh, whatsoever the things or the solids that is not that can't be separated during the primary treatment. Um, so it separates there. Yeah. So meaning to say that the separation of suspended solid from the liquid it also happens during the primary treatment and also during the secondary treatment. Okay. So this is to make sure that uh, the final output the final effluent that comes out from the treatment plant is free from suspended solids okay right so it's not mentioned over here but actually there is eh? so the the equipment is called clarifier clarifier so you know clarifier is like uh, this is it it is to clarify clarify it is to separate uh things eh? So it's actually to further separate the suspended, further separate uh, suspended solid from the liquid. So where this uh, suspended solid solid will go? Uh, liquid waste. Okay. So this suspended solid, remember, uh, in uh, earlier, I mentioned about the sludge, right? So the sludge will be sent to uh, to a specific unit that dewater it, that removes the water. And uh, in some uh, cases, it will be used as compost. It can be also be used as um, as a um, compost uh, as a source for producing biogas, right? So this suspended solid will be will be sent to the same uh, unit that receive the sludge during the primary treatment okay right okay let's uh continue first with tertiary treatment later on i'll talk about those uh sludge okay so now the tertiary treatment so once the water the liquid waste water from the secondary treatment is treated it is passed to the tertiary treatment okay so the tertiary treatment the purpose is to provide a final treatment or to polish the effluent before it is released to the uh, water cycle, uh, to the river or to the sea. Okay, so what is the treatment involved? Uh, there are actually many uh, types or many ways of treating it. Yeah? Uh, so at the uh, Sarawak Sewerage Department, last time Puan City mentioned that they treat uh, the wastewater, the secondary effluent with chlorine, right, before it it the uh, Effluent is released to the river. Uh, so the chlorine is, is the chemical, so it's a chemical treatment. Yeah? Uh, and the chlorine will kill all the microbes, whatever the microbes that are present, uh, you know, during the secondary treatment. Okay, so that is one of the ways. But apart from it, um, it can also involve filtration. Yeah, filtration, meaning to say that just to make sure that there is no uh, suspended matters. Yeah, from the liquid, right? Uh, that is also considered under the tertiary treatment, and also 
uh, lagooning. Lagooning is uh, the wetland. Do you know what the wetland? So the purpose of the lagoon, uh, lagooning me, or the lagoons or the wetlands. So let's say this is the treatment, the treatment plant. Eh? Let's say this is the wastewater that comes into the treatment plant. So this is treatment plant. Okay, so in this treatment plant, uh, all the primary to the tertiary treatment takes place. Lah, yeah? So this is the from the household areas, from the industry, the, the wastewater. Okay, so the wastewater is treated by the treatment plant. And before uh, and after that, whatever that comes out, it will go into the river, isn't it? But we just consider the situation in Malaysia where we don't use, we don't convert it into clean water. Huh? So we dispose it to the river or sea, right? Okay, so the lagoon, lagoon or wetlands, um, is created in between the treatment plant and the river or the sea, the final destination. So here, there will be wetland. We call it wetland or a lagoon, okay? Wetlands or lagoon. It's actually like lakes are man-made lakes. So it's created in order to, uh, to contain the wastewater, right? To make sure that uh, the, you know, uh, I mean, at, at this point, actually, um, there are analysis being done. Lah. Let's say they want to check what is the uh, quality of the affluent, whether the quality is um, okay or not. Yeah? So they check at the wetlands before they release to the river. So that is not that, I mean, anything happened, it can be safe. It still can be safe. I mean, the, the river will not be polluted yet. Okay. So of course, there is a, uh, the buff over here, I believe, like what I understood from Kuan City. See? So it means that anything happened, if let's say, um, the quality of the apron does not meet the requirement, they will block the valve, means that uh, the affluent from the lagoons or from the wetland will not go into the river or the sea yet. So it means they have to do something with the treatment processes. Maybe they have to um, improve or uh, add some more chlorines, maybe something like that. Yeah? So these wetlands or lagoons, uh, it served as, uh, as, a, as a screening stage lah, yeah, at that point before um, the effluent is deposited to the sea. Okay, it provides um, settlement. It provides like uh, uh, a buffer system, correct? Yeah? A buffer system for for the um, for the treated wastewater. Okay. Yeah, so that is the importance of it. So uh, if you still remember uh, at from the drawn pictures or videos shown, there are several lagoons uh, created or mapped uh, at in nearby the uh, Sarawak River. Okay, that is that is actually the lagoons or the wetlands. That is the same thing actually. Okay, that is the purpose of lagoons or the wetlands. Okay. Uh, Nutrient removal. Okay, so uh, during the tertiary treatment, some of the nutrients are also removed, uh, perhaps by certain treatment. Okay, so so those those treatment it will uh, remove uh, certain um, nutrients that are not favorable for uh, the water cycle, but for the river, for the sea. For example, uh, nitrogen and Phosphorus. So what happened? Because when there is an excess amount of nitrogen and phosphorus, it will uh, it will build up. I mean, the, the nutrients will be will be built up, and it will encourage the growth of, for example, algae, the weeds, or the cyanobacteria. Okay. So what happened when these um, organisms grown in excess? It will use uh, it will use the oxygen in the water, isn't it? So it means that it will affect the aquatic organisms. So that is the effect. So meaning to say that we want to prevent uh, the overgrowth of all of these organisms, the weeds, the algae. So by 
how how you want to prevent it by removing the nitrogen and phosphorus that can lead to that to their growth. Okay, so when there is no nitrogen, when there is no phosphorus, there will be less uh you know, less growth of these uh, organisms. So that is the things to be tackled. So that's why uh, certain uh, nutrients, especially nitrogen and phosphorus, they have to be removed from the wastewater in order to avoid uh, the overgrowth of uh, all of these uh, organisms. Eh? So otherwise it will affect the uh, aquatic ecosystem, meaning to say that the fish will not have enough oxygen. What happened? Uh, the fish will be dead um, and other aquatic organisms as well. So that is not to be, um, that is to be prevented, lah, that, that situation, okay? So that is the purpose of the nutrient removal. And it is to be done during the tertiary treatment as well. Okay, so another, um, another, another thing that is to be conducted during the tertiary treatment is disinfection. Okay, this is, oh, sorry, I haven't shared the Okay, disinfection. I think this is quite common in many uh, treatment plants, whereby uh, they uh, treat the treated wastewater uh, from the secondary uh, treatment. They treat it by adding chlorines. Uh, this chlorine is the most common one now. Uh, there are other options as well, like UV, ozone, but uh, those are quite expensive. That methods are quite expensive. So. Chlorination is uh, more common than the other two. Okay? And it is actually practiced in, I think, most of the treatment plants in Malaysia. So the chlorine is added to the treated water in order to kill whatsoever uh, the remaining microbes, right? Uh, so that the release uh, wastewater or effluent yeah, will not contain all those uh, biological matters anymore. Okay? So meaning to say that they are clear. So chlorination is one of the important steps during the tertiary treatment. Okay, so that's what the primary to tertiary treatment is all about. Okay, so you can see that every of the treatment, it has its own purpose. Yeah, and there is a continuity. Yeah? It means that after the primary treatment, the effluent from that is channeled to the uh, secondary and finally to the tertiary. Right, so what happened to the sludge? Okay, remember in when I mentioned about the primary treatment, the primary separates the suspended solids, right, from the water. And you see just now from primary, secondary to tertiary, the main uh, the main thing to be treated is actually the liquid wastewater, right? So the whatever the suspended solid is separated and it is channeled to a specific equipment okay so now let's let's revise what i said uh, in the earlier part uh, during the primary here okay. Okay. Hold on, I'll try to reconnect my iPad.
Okay, anyway. Um, so if you still remember what I explained in the primary treatment, uh, the suspended solids, uh, or we call it sludge, right? So those sludge is channeled to, uh, to an equipment, to a specific equipment, whereby uh, the equipment is to remove the water, to remove whatever the remaining water inside the suspended solids in order to make sure that at the end, the sludge is uh, free from water, is uh, dry, yeah, it's dry. Okay. Okay. Anyway, I'm gonna put it my iPad. Just going to share. Okay. Uh, so. Okay, so that is what happened. Uh, so the sludge must be treated and disposed. Okay, so uh, during the treatment, I mean, when it is uh, first taken from the primary treatment, uh, the process that needs to be done is uh, called dewatering. It is not mentioned over here, but there is a process called dewatering, um, whereby the water is removed from the sludge. Yeah? Because the sludge is actually, is a wet solid. Yeah? It still has some amount of liquid. So during the dewatering, uh, the water, whatever the remaining water is removed, and then at the end it will have uh, it will produce uh, dry solids, eh? totally dry, uh, dry sludge, dry solid, eh? dry solid. So, what happened to that um, sludge? Uh, it can be okay. There are several uh, applications. The first one, it can be uh, used as a source for composting. You know, composting. Composting is the process of making compost or making fertilizer, a right? budget. Right? So because of the sludge, it is actually organic matters. So organic matters means that it can be uh, degradable. Yeah, when you, uh, you know, when you compose it, it can actually be uh, de biodegraded, right? So that's one of the application, and this is quite common. Even uh, in Malaysia, also we apply that. But uh, according to Point City last time, they don't do it in large scale. They do it just for small scale. Yeah? But that is one of the uses of the sludge. Okay, another uses is as a source for producing biogas. Okay, so the sludge uh, in some treatment plants, uh, perhaps in uh, advanced uh, plants, yeah? in high tech countries, like maybe developed countries, they have uh, another unit operations called digester. Digester, okay? So the sludge, you just imagine the sludge or the dried solids, study, they are sent to this digester, right? And in this digester, what happened is that uh, the sludge is used as a pit stop for producing biogas. So the process of making the biogas is uh, anaerobic digestion. It's actually a fermentation process whereby the microbes, the thermophilic microbes are involved, right? microbes that can uh, sustain at high temperature and they are anaerobic, means that they can survive without oxygen because the process is anaerobic. So the anaerobic digestion is carried out in this digester. This is an example of digester uh, whereby it involves the microorganisms and also high temperature. Yeah, at uh, 55 degrees. Okay. So after the process is completed, uh, methane will be produced. So methane is a gas. Yeah. Methane, you know, is a is a is a gas. Um, uh, yeah, the methane is produced after the digestion uh, by the microbes. Okay. So the organic matters, the sludge is the starting materials. So that is one of the potential of the sludge. It can be converted into biogas. We know methane is a greenhouse gas, right? But in this case, actually by nature, the methane, it can be also used as a, as a source of fuel. It can be, uh, it can be used as a, soft, as a source of energy. Yeah? That is the nature of methane. So when the methane is recovered, 
it can be used actually to uh, run the plants. It can be used as a source of energy at the plant itself. And that is what happened in some of the uh, plants in uh, the developed countries, right? Meaning to say that they generate their own energy from the waste. Uh, so that is from waste to energy. No? Uh, so that is one of the applications or the uh, potential uses of sludge. You yeah, just imagine from the waste, we can generate energy, biogas. No? Uh, another way of treating the sludge is by incineration. Okay? This is uh, not really favorable because of it will cause pollution, yeah. But that is also one of the ways uh, for you to know. Yeah. So there are three different ways of uh, treating the sludge. The first one is composting. Second is anaerobic digestion. We're going to talk about biogas uh, more in the fifth LU, yeah, the biogas generation. And the other way of treating the sludge is by incinerating, by uh, burning it. So by burning it means that. Um, it will cause pollution, actually. Okay, so what happened in Malaysia? Maybe we adopt composting. No, maybe. I'm not sure about uh, digester, whether is there any plants that have digestors? I'm not really sure about it, but um, it is normally um, available in uh, highly advanced plants because the cost is very expensive. And it requires high expertise, yeah? high expertise to run the plants because it, it is another, another equipment, you know, another unit operation. So it needs skills and expertise uh, to run that. Okay, so yeah, so that's it. Actually, what the, this algae is all about. So basically, we talk about how uh, the liquid wastewater is treated. Right, um, and there are several stages: primary, secondary, and tertiary. And then uh, we also talk about how the suspended solids from the liquid wastewater is treated. That is large, right? Uh, and there are several possible ways of treating it. Uh, and also, one of the ways is just now go to the landfill, actually. So, yeah. So it means that after dewatering, yeah, it means that the sludge is. Uh, dry and then because we uh, for some countries that do not have the technology to treat it, we just send it to the landfill. So that's one of the ways as well. Okay. Right. So any question from this topic? Anything you're not clear? Guys? Nice. Are you still with me? Hello. Are you guys? Are you are you still with me? You understand everything? Yes, doctor. Okay. So yeah, that's it for today. If we don't have any more questions, then we can disperse. Uh So for those who haven't scanned your attendance just now, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so there will be a, another virtual field trip that I will post inshallah by today on ELIP. Okay, so you guys have to uh, watch that, participate by checking in at the checkpoints. Uh, just, just go through the video and you know what you have to do. And yeah, yeah, kind of manual attendance, okay. And then uh, I will post on, I will also post the link for the submission, right? Uh, and also for the reflection, okay? The reflection report. Okay. All right, so just web scan, you may need if you want. Yeah, thank you very much for your attention and attendance. Now I will pause it. Stay safe. Yeah. Have a nice day. Thank you, Doctor. Have a nice day. You are welcome. You too. Thank you, Doctor. Welcome.
Thank you. 